dips, spray races, hand spraying, pour on. Just some of the ways of providing effective chemical control of ticks and tick-borne diseases throughout Africa. But for any system to be successful, the people working with the animals have to be properly trained, especially in maintaining the correct concentration of a caricide. The type of tick, whether three-host, two-host or single-host, can make a big difference to the type of chemical and frequency of treatment. Let's start first with the dip tank, introduced throughout Africa at the turn of the century. It's still the most effective method of applying a caricide. We want our cattle dipped because it will kill ticks. I think dipping is very important and we want to dip our animals regularly. We wanted to help build this deep tank because we wanted to travel less distance with our cattle. Before, we used to travel a long way with the cattle. But this one will be near, so we won't have to travel as far. It's important to dip the cattle so that they will be free from disease. Great care has been taken with the siting of dip tanks so they can be operated efficiently and safely. The dip should be built on a reasonably level site near a source of water. Disposal holes must be built next to the dip tank to ensure that no pollution of streams or wells is possible. The last thing responsible farmers want is to pollute drinking water or kill fish in the streams and rivers. The area around the disposal hole should be fenced to prevent cattle going near it. The dip tank itself must be deep enough for the cattle to have their heads submerged to kill brown ear ticks. It should also be just wide enough for a single adult animal to swim through. It's important to know the correct volume of the dip tank. This can be done by filling the empty tank with water from a vessel such as a 200 litre drum. The gradual addition of measured volumes of water can be used to calibrate a measuring stick for use when replenishing the dip. Filling should continue until the water level is approximately 15 centimeters from the top of the tank. This should be between 15 and 20,000 liters. A chisel mark should be made in the wall of the tank to mark this fill level and the total capacity painted on the outside wall. The collecting pen leads to a race where there are foot baths to wash dirt from the feet and stop contamination of the dip. Ridges in the foot bath help to spread the claws. Foot baths should be regularly cleaned and replenished with water. A roof over the dip helps to prevent flood water getting in and good splash walls reduce waste. The dip should be designed so that the cattle jump rather than slide in. The exit race and pen drain towards the dip tank so that any dip wash dripping from the cattle is not wasted. The excess wash returns to the tank through a drain hole, which is plugged at the end of dipping. If it isn't plugged, the dip could get flooded with storm water. This is a common mistake. The dip itself has to be maintained um, properly. Uh, properly means uh, if it's uh, a cemented dip, uh, all cracks have to be repaired uh, to avoid water seeping out of the dip. Um, you must make sure that the footpaths are well maintained, uh, where animals and the crashes, where the animals are held for two, three minutes, uh, they are well maintained so that we don't have animals jumping out. I think it is very important uh, that uh, uh, the, all the farmers make sure that uh, um, at the end of the dipping, uh, the drainage holes are blocked properly to avoid uh, flooding for the dip, especially if it is if you replenish your, your concentrate on the basis of uh, uh, the amount of water that has been taken out by the animals. If the dip is well run and well maintained, the dip will only have to be emptied every two to three years. The acaricide must be measured accurately to ensure the correct concentration. 
Too little and it may not be effective. Too much and it's costing you money and could be toxic to the animals. Always read the label carefully and follow the manufacturer's instructions. One might think that uh, you are an expert after using a concentrate for many, many years, but different uh, deep concentrates vary uh, in uh, the rates of re replenishment. So it is important to keep on reminding yourself now and then that you are using the right replenishment rate. The only way you can do that is to make sure that you are reading the instructions and you are reading the labels correctly. It's important to make sure that the dip chemical is well mixed in the tank. First, mix the chemical with a small amount of water and then add this to the full dip tank. The whole dip wash must then be thoroughly agitated or stirred. A simple way to do this is to use 20 to 30 animals to fully mix the dip. But remember to dip them for a second time. Otherwise, these cattle won't have received a full strength wash. The dip will need to be replenished at the end of each day's dipping, or ideally after every 500 head of cattle are dipped. When dipping, the active ingredient in the wash is removed at a faster rate than the water. This results in understrength dip wash and is known as stripping. As a result, replenishment rates will usually be more concentrated than the initial fill rate, and they will also vary with different acaricides. There are two ways of calculating the replenishment rate of the dip. The conventional method and the head count method pioneered by Coopers. With the conventional system, the amount of water to be replaced has to be calculated using a calibrated measuring stick. Once this is known, the amount of dip chemical required for topping up the tank to the correct strength can be calculated. A side tank can help with these calculations if it has been accurately calibrated. If this is filled with dip wash at the replenishment concentration, it can be added to the dip tank at intervals to maintain the correct concentration. With the head count system, count the number of cattle passing through the dip and according to the manufacturer's instructions, add the required amount of a caricide to keep strict control on the strength of the dip. The advantage of the headcount system is that it makes it easier to maintain the correct concentration of a caricide in the dip tank, so reducing the need for frequent dip testing. Dip testing is carried out to check on the dip wash concentration. The testing is carried out in a laboratory using highly specialized equipment, but results can take up to four weeks to be returned. However, with accurate replenishment and good management of the dip at all times, dip testing should only be required once or twice a year, or if the dip gets flooded. In some countries, a system which removes the need for dip testing is becoming very popular. With the total replacement, or TR system, the chemical in the wash is allowed to degrade between dippings. This allows a fresh wash to be mixed and added at the start of every dipping day. Triotix TR containing Amitraz has been formulated for this purpose. It ensures that the dip concentration is correct and effective every dipping day. We ensure that dipping is effective because we are using a total replenishment strategy at our dip tanks. Now that means that we use an acaricide, an amidine, uh, and we fill up the dip tank uh, and we know that that acaricide is 100% effective during that day. The same basic principles of dipping also apply to spray races, where keeping the machinery in good working order is the challenge. Sighting is important, and you must know the main wind direction to avoid excessive spray drift. As with dipping, the acaricide must be accurately measured and thoroughly mixed with water before being added to the sump tank. Keeping the nozzles clean and free from grit is a priority. Check that all the nozzles are correctly aligned and working properly. Clear them if necessary. Ensure the pressure is correct before putting any animals through the spray race.
Filtering the returning spray wash will help to keep the nozzles clear. The foot baths help to keep mud out of the race, which could easily block the spray nozzles. Ensure there's a good flow of clean water through the foot bath. Although quicker than dipping, spraying has to be done well to be effective. Cattle should pass through in single file. If the pressure is correct, the animal will be thoroughly wetted. Again, a kerosite concentrations must be accurately maintained. The sump is relatively small and the chemical is quickly stripped. A calculated amount of chemical should be added after every 100 head of cattle. As with a dip, the exit pen should drain back to the spray area to avoid wastage of the acaricide. We find it necessary to spray the cattle here because uh, uh, of uh, tick bone diseases. And we are also neighboring some farms that uh, do not take tick control measures seriously. As for the nozzle, we have to see that they are not blocked. And we also take care of the, of the, of the pump. Uh, before you spray, we have to put clean water in the foot baths. And that water now takes care of the mud, the excess mud that might be on the feet of the cows, the, the hooves, such that when they get into the spraying chamber, that mud does not eventually get into the, into the sump. Because if that happens, then the mud will uh, block the nozzles. While the animals are in the crush after spraying, some farmers use the time to hand dress the tail and clip and then hand dress the ears to provide additional control of certain ticks. Hand spraying using a bucket pump can be very effective for smaller herds. It should deliver an adequate volume of wash in the form of a coarse wetting spray, not a fine mist. The power of the spray from a bucket pump is usually greater than that from a knapsack sprayer, allowing better penetration of the coat and generally superior tick control. Traditional hand spraying is only effective if an animal is thoroughly wetted. The whole surface of the animal should be treated and special attention paid to areas where ticks attach. 5 to 10 litres of spray wash will be used per animal, but in this way control can be effectively achieved. In some countries, Triatix wettable powder is mixed with water and applied using a technique called high concentration minimum volume, or HCMV. With this method of application, a concentrated spray is applied only to the areas where most ticks attach such as around the ears, the muzzle, dewlap, the lower body, between the back legs and under the tail. One litre of concentrated wash can treat 10 to 15 cattle depending on the tick challenge. Only a simple hand sprayer is needed. Very little water is used and there's little waste from runoff. In contrast to other methods of tick control, HCMV spray will not achieve 100% control. It will not prevent the transmission of tick-borne diseases, but can be used to reduce their incidence and direct tick damage. It's proving especially useful to small-scale farmers in areas where East Coast fever is not a problem. I've now rather settled on uh, putting a concentrated tick aside on the target spots on the animal which I call spot spraying and uh, it uh, is so far working very well but it does have its weaknesses too. Uh, it's particularly good on certain ticks but uh, on the born tick the difficulty is this tick uh, sits on the underline of the animal and uh, is often not seen and you can miss it with spraying. Poron synthetic pyrethroids are also popular because of their ease of use and their activity against both ticks and flies. The quantity applied depends on the body weight of the animal. It should be applied along the upper midline either using an applicator or the squeeze and pour pack. 
The three applications should be applied on the head between the ears, from the shoulder to the hip, and across the rump at the root of the tail. The oily nature of the product means that the acaricide gradually spreads over the whole animal. Cattle must be dry, otherwise the poron will not distribute itself effectively. You will find that spot-on will be helpful in controlling tick-borne diseases, which are part of the main difficulty which prevents people from farming livestock. It is easy to use and very, very efficient. We've been through the ways of applying acaricides, but what about the chemicals themselves? A wide range is available from different chemical groups. They all have the capacity to kill ticks, but will vary in their speed of kill, residual protection period, stripping rate, and stability.